Hi, and welcome to your Urban Connection. Remember, this is the channel that is often imitated, but is never duplicated. Now, you know, about a week ago, police in Miami, Florida, stopped a member of the Miami Dade uh, Dolphins football team on an alleged traffic infraction. Now, the images that we saw were those of this young black football player who was unarmed being pulled viciously from his vehicle, thrown on the ground, handcuffed with an officer's knee in his back as he's being handcuffed, then stood up on the near the curb handcuffed behind his back, only to have another officer from behind jump on his back and wrestle him to the ground. Now, on an alleged traffic stop, ladies and gentlemen, as a black man, I can tell you that I have witnessed some of the behavior that was shown in the footage of this traffic stop. And the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that on an alleged traffic stop, four to five officers are at the scene. Now, you know, I've been around for a very long time. I've witnessed an awful lot of traffic stops, some involving myself, some involving others some involving others of a different race. And I want to tell you, never, not one time, can I remember seeing a white motorist stop for a traffic violation be surrounded by four to five police officers. I've never seen it. But I've seen it many times in black areas and with black residents being stopped for traffic violations, allegedly, all right? So here's the deal. This was excessive force that was used on Tariq Hill, who was the football player for the Miami Dolphins, who was less than two blocks away from the stadium as he was on his way to participate in the football game that day. Now, you know, here's the problem that I have. When will police departments insist upon properly training their officers about how to conduct themselves on an alleged quote unquote traffic stop? Now, not only must you train them properly, you must enforce that they use that training properly and respectfully, no matter who or what race the person is that you've stopped, it's still an alleged traffic stop. Now, what is, makes this even worse, ladies and gentlemen, is we know from past experience, and I'm talking about two incidents in particular, one being in Minnesota, and one being in Memphis, Tennessee, where victims were forcefully forced and yanked out of their vehicles, placed on the ground, one with a knee on his neck, with four or five or six police officers standing around, and he ends up dying. The second one, was pulled from his vehicle forcefully, disrespectfully, and forced on the ground, face down, hands behind his back, while fellow officers kicked him in the face, in the head, beat him unmercifully, unmercifully and then he 
also succumb. Okay? And I'm talking about Tyree Nichols in Memphis. And, you know, what's, what's so alarming about this is police officers and departments have to notice that there is, there was several officers in Minnesota that went to prison behind their unlawful, disrespectful use of force. One of them, or at least one of them, remains in prison as we speak. At the same time, in the same week that this happened with Tyree Hill, five officers were going on trial in Memphis, Tennessee for their involvement in the actions, the illegal, I might add, unlawful use of force, brutality against Mr. Tyree Nichols. Those officers are in court right now. Two of them have pleaded guilty. The other three have pleaded not guilty, but it doesn't make any difference. With all of the evidence, the cameras, the photographs, the witnesses, there's no way in the hell they're going to come out of there with an innocent verdict. Okay? It's not going to happen. So you have to ask the question, when will these police departments, and if not the police departments, the cities, who are having to cough up large amounts of money, and I'm talking about millions, to pay to the families of the victims in these misuse of force incidents and cases. I mean, these guys here in Miami, not only were there body cameras, not only were there cameras in the cars, but there were actually, if you look at the footage, there was actually at least eight to 10 people standing by that had their phones up taking pictures. What in the hell is in the minds of officers that will act this way knowing full well the cameras are everywhere. Doesn't make any difference. Everywhere. But you see what that does is that begs the question, how many other cases take place on a daily basis in the various cities around the country with people that are not named Tyreek Hill? They were not members of a professional football team. Okay? Just average John Doe's on their way home from maybe work or to and from school or are just out for an evening of entertainment, whatever. How many of them are dragged forcefully out into the, out of their cars for traffic violations? Now, you know, here's the part that disturbs me the most. With all of the evidence, with all of the video, and you clearly can see and particularly this officer who jumps in from behind after he's handcuffed behind his back and forcefully forces him down to the ground a second time. Now, we clearly know that this officer was immediately placed on, was reassigned to, uh, I guess, a desk job. I'm not sure. But clearly, somebody in that department recognizes and acknowledges that this guy overreacted, did nothing to de-escalate an already bad situation. All right? Now, so we don't know how many others, but I can imagine, okay, I can imagine how many other rogue cops, and I'm going to use that word, are out there conducting themselves in unprofessional, illegal manners on our streets. In the case in Miami, and this is one that gets me every time, the Miami FOP says that Mr. Hill initiated this incident. And the video clearly shows that Mr. Hill was sitting in his car with the windows rolled up. There's no way in the hell that he could have been initiating anything. Sitting in his car. 
wanting to know why he was stuck. So what's going on? Are we not learning anything? Are our police departments totally, totally out of control? Because we continue to see these things happening over and over and over. And I would think that when you look and you see Derek Chauvin in prison, and maybe for the rest of his life, I don't know, but for his actions in Minnesota, you look and see five black officers in Memphis on trial. Most of them, if not all of them, are on their way to prison for the same kind of actions. Even though they went took it a little further, it all was initiated by an only illegal use of force, disrespect for a citizen who was supposedly stopped for an alleged traffic violation. One can only wonder what would have happened had that been anybody else other than Tyree Hill in Miami. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for this to stop. Now, here's the problem. The FOP, and I don't care what city you're in, what state you're in, the FOP has only one job as far as they're concerned. And that job is to declare the innocence of any officer on their force, no matter how, how many violations, how many department policies he violates, how many un unlawful uses of force he uses, he's innocent. He's always innocent as far as the FOP is concerned. That is their job, to protect their officers from any criminal charges, any criminal investigation, the best they can. No matter what you see with your own eyes, no matter what the video camera shows you, no matter what the the the, the body cam show, he's the police officer never was the one that instigated this conflict. These officers always try to reflect the situation. Well, the body cameras doesn't show that, nor does the, uh, the uh, uh, dash cams. They don't show that, nor does the, the videos from citizens, private citizens. They don't show that. They show that this man had his windows rolled up. He didn't even get out of the car, made no attempt to get out of the car, didn't roll down his windows, and then they, uh, apparently his door was unlocked. They opened the door and forcefully dragged him out. Now, I want to see what's going on here. I want to see what the investigation shows. But we know what the video shows. We know what the witnesses say. As a matter of fact, two of his uh, co-members of the Miami football team happened to be on their way to the stadium. And they saw what was happening. They stopped and got out to attempt to find out what was going on with Mr. Hill. And one of them was handcuffed. Okay. Now, I don't think it was any charges were filed because he didn't do anything. Maybe he verbally asked what's going on or why are you handcuffing him or what's going on? And one of them was handcuffed. You see, this is more out of control police officing. All right, that's what it is. So we've got to do something. We've got to get a handle on this, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Because these, these I would think at some point in time, these cities, and these uh, uh, taxpayers in these cities will come to the point where they feel they no longer want to be the ones that are paying out these big settlements for unlawful behavior of members of their police department. So these police chiefs, the city managers, and the mayors of these cities are going to have to get their act together because you can do better. And if you've got a rogue office on your force, you've seen the red flags, okay? But you'd rather keep that office on the force rather than clean up the mess that he's making for your city. And as long as you are kowtowing to the FOP, who's insisting 
that none of their officers, no matter how bad he is, was doing anything wrong. He did not escalate the situation by his actions. Oh, no, no, no. Our officers don't do that. Then this thing is going to continue spiraling out of control and big settlements in the millions, and in some cases, tens of millions of dollars are being paid. And that's money that could be utilized in and making uh, your streets safe, making uh, property taxes lower, maybe even sales taxes. But it could be used for something positive for a community. Paying out these voice settlements for inactions and unlawful behavior because of members of your police department don't know how to conduct themselves, that's not positive. There's nothing positive about that. Tyree Hill, I'm sorry, not Tyree, Tyree Hill uh, certainly is fortunate that he was not seriously, if not fatally, injured by these rogue, I don't know if I should say untrained or not, but out of control officers using excessive force on a motorist who stopped allegedly just for a traffic violation. This is not the way any officer should be trained and any officer that violates his training or his policies should be immediately dismissed from that department because he's a stain on your department. And the FOP lets it be known each and every day that they're no friend of the citizen. They're only friends with members of their department. No matter how badly they perform, no matter how much they disregard the training, the department policies, and act in a manner that is unprofessional and unbecoming of a lawful police department. But you know, I want to tell you one thing, found. I'm not so sure that police officers are basically following the rule of law that they swore to serve and protect. And the reason I say that is because just last week, a police department FOP, I believe it was in Alabama, signed on to endorse Donald J. Trump, who's been convicted for 34 felonies. And this police department endorsed him for president. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? That tells you that these officers are not interested in serving and protecting certain members of their communities. They should hold their head in shame for their actions as a group, as an organization. I hope that other offices and other departments in other states and cities don't follow their lead. Thanks for watching. See you next time. to people who didn't know before, some people may have known her before, who could end up having a very prominent role on a second-term term. That's what we're